now what? And really the bigger picture is what I was mentioning. CAD CAM or computer aided design and computer aided manufacture is the bigger picture of all of this digital dentistry stuff. And this is really how it works. You have your inputs, such as your scanner, your CBCT, your face scanner, which are becoming more and more popular. And these all go into a CAD software or these days the Medit apps, such as if you heard Jenny at the start, Medit just released their Clinic CAD app, which is kind of mind blowing because it maybe now we have a real competitor to Exacad and 3Shape. After using these apps, we then have the output, which is your milling machine and your 3D printer. Now, as mentioned, the Medit apps, you know, these are really what makes the Medit scanner so good. And I really think this is what makes the Medit scanner so popular and, and just so well talked about by all their customers because you get all these apps for free. It is endless value with these scanners. And they've got all sorts of different apps. They keep innovating with new apps. Or you can use CAD CAM software. The CAD CAM software, the common ones are three shape, uh, Exacad, these are probably the most commonly used CAD CAM software, software with Medit. But of course, you have the Cerec software. Now, with Cerec software, you cannot use Cerec chair side with Medit, but you can use in lab with Medit. Going back to the Medit apps, because really this is what makes Medit so special. And how you access these Medit apps is in the app box in their software. And as you can see, there's just a ton of apps here. And I wanted to go over some of the key ones that really made a change in my practice. Um, but you can see they've done everything from an occlusal analyzer, Medit design, orthodontic simulation, Medit temporary splints, and now we have Clinic CAD. So model builder, many people who are interested in digital dentistry will know about Medit model builder. This is probably the best model builder on the entire market. There are some good model builders out there. Three Shape does a nice model builder, but it just doesn't have the functionality that Medit has. Um, the other thing is that previous to this model builder, we used to make models use, using Mesh Mixer, and that was such an, an annoying process. Uh, now with the Medit model builder, you can literally delegate this to your DA. It's so easy and efficient. Within a few clicks, you can have a model ready, and this can be used for anything you like, such as your thermoform appliances, suck downs, retainers, orthodontic analysis, everything. Then you have the orthodontic simulator. One common misconception about orthodontic simulators is that these are not orthodontic treatment planning tools. These are just a communication tool. And you can scan the patient and then with a simple few clicks, show them some example of what could be possible with orthodontic treatment. Once again, this is not a treatment planning tool like you know Invisalign ClinCheck. This is simply a communication tool. And it's just fantastic to have this type of software with your scanner for free. And what's more is that all these software and all these Medit apps are free for anyone. You know, if you have a three shape scanner, you can use the middle Medit model builder. These apps are not locked to the Medit scanners. Then you have Medit splints. Um, this is quite a popular software to quickly and efficiently make splints for 3D printing. So you can scan the patient within a few clicks, make a splint, export that splint to your 3D printer. And Medit now has a number of integrations. They just announced an integration with Sprint Ray. Um, and really, it's just a, a very fast, efficient workflow. So you can export that splint, integrate it with your, your printer, have that printing. And all of this is so simple. Once again, the key is delegation. And you can delegate all of this to your dental assistant or any other support staff. Temporaries was a popular app. and I kind of felt like this was the company testing the waters or at least starting to develop their Clinic CAD app because Meta Temporary is released onto the market and first you could you had to use a pre-op scan, then they developed their own library, then they developed their AI and now you can make a Meta Temporary um, crown as simple as a couple of clicks. You, you import your scan, <coughs> excuse me, you import your scan, you 
delineate your margin line, just like Exacad, just like Serac. And then with an AI and a tooth library, it can make this temporary crown for you. And something that's really critical is, is same day dentistry. I feel like that is really where you get the biggest advantage of, of CAD CAM and of scanning and digital dentistry. I highly believe that if we can simplify the CAD process, more and more dentists would get into this. And if you haven't watched my first webinar that I did with Medit, I talked about same day dentistry using Medit scanners, and this was a case I showed. And you can do this predictably in a single visit. And these are lithium disilicate crowns that are, that are milled in a single visit using digital dentistry. And I really think this is where the main advantage of, of digital dentistry comes. And, and you simply can't do this with traditional methods. As Jenny mentioned, we now have Medit Clinic CAD, and it's just in an open beta at the moment. But this is a really interesting app that uh, Medit have released. It's basically their foray into full CAD CAM. They have a scanner, and now with a, a proper CAD software, I think it's starting to really get interesting in this space. And this app can be downloaded by anyone. It's in the app box, it's for free. And I'll be very curious to see how the company develops this. So there are so many tools in digital dentistry that you have to start with a scanner. If you wanna get into 3D printing, you have to have a scanner. If you want to do any form of CAD CAM, you have to have a scanner. So a lot of the times what stops people from getting into CAD CAM, as I mentioned, is CAD design. This is the scary part for most dentists. They don't want to be a technician. And that's why I think AI is very interesting. And things like Medit Clinic CAD is going to be very interesting because if they can make this as simple as a few clicks and lower completely the learning curve, then I think more and more dentists will get into this. But for those of you who don't want to do any CAD CAM, any CAD design, I will let you know that AI is changing the world, as you can see all around you with ChatGPT, but it's also entering the market in dentistry. You have so many different AI tools like Atomica AI, which does AI designed surgical guides. You have Diagnica with its AI, AI diagnosis of 2D and 3D x-rays. SprintRay in their workflow and in their software has an option to either have designs made by a technician or by AI. And True Abutment, which many of you will know is a very popular company that makes, well, initially it started with, you know, custom abutments and that sort of componentry. Now seems like it's a full-fledged software company because they have AI designs for dentures and, and all sorts of other things. So the AI space is very exciting and is very interesting. You have other companies like Dentbird, um, and these are kind of competing with all sorts of different companies by offering a solution that these, this is just a web-based AI dental CAD solution. And like I say, without a scanner, you just can't utilize or access any of this. As I mentioned, Atomic AI, this is what their, their website looks like. Again, it's a web-based basic AI design solution for implant guides. Now, moving on, 3D printing seems to be the next big thing. Um, a lot of talk and a lot of hype is going to 3D printing. And I wanted to conclude the webinar just talking about 3D printing a little bit and, and how you know, we use it in my practice. Obviously, a lot of you will know you can print models. So you can print models for all sorts of different things, aligners, suck downs, um, retainers, sports guards, night guards, all sorts of things. Our lab at IDD Lab also uses um, printing models to test the fit of restorations, especially for larger cases, full mouth rehabs, implant restorations, that sort of stuff. Really one of the lowest hanging fruits and the biggest advantages of 3D printing is printing splints, printing night guards. In our practice, this is basically replaced milling splints especially when using this material. The key thing about printing now, guys, is it's a materials race. Yes, anyone can print a splint, 
and any printer can be used to print a splint, but not every material is the same. And Key Splint Soft is basically the gold standard in the industry by far. Most splint materials that are printed are far too hard, but Key Splint Soft is fantastic and, and is what we use for printing our splints. And also dentures. Dentures is a massive thing in, in 3D printing, and I think it's just going to get better and better. I still, you know, I have a, a PM7, so I mill Ivotion dentures, but I also 3D print dentures, and I still think, you know, it's quite hard to beat a milled PMMA acrylic denture. It just looks so good. But 3D printing dentures is getting there, and you just can't beat this workflow. This patient came in looking like this, the top picture, and she needed a denture. Um, she was traveling somewhere. Of course, you know, patients always come last minute. And this denture could be printed within one week. And if really, if you were pushing it, you could do this within 24 to 48 hours. And th these are the sort of workflows that are just a mind blowing. And you just can't, you can't beat that with analog. The other thing is, obviously printing crowns and, and temporary restorations, uh, whether or not permanent crown restorations that are printed will ever be, you know, as much uh, hype as they are made to be. Uh, so much talk is going on about printing restorations for full um, crowns that are, you know, permanent that will last. I still think a resin is a resin and it is quite hard to beat zirconia or lithium desilicate but I still think they have their place. And this is an example, this is a full mouth rehab case that I carried out um, a few months ago. You do your preparation, you scan this, and then you can print these restorations. And these restorations in my mind are infinitely better than any direct temporary, such as using Bazacryl or Luxatemp. These just beat direct temporaries in every way and form. For one, all these restorations can be printed with the right printer in about 20 to 30 minutes. Some printers are slower, they may take 40 minutes, but the point being is that if you tried to mill all of these, that would take hours. It's a, that's a power of printing in that printing one restoration or printing 12 is roughly the same time. Maybe it will add another 10, 15 minutes, but it's nothing like milling, which basically a restoration takes 30 minutes to mill and you times that by 12. But a lot of the times, you know, with all the hype, people don't realize how much work goes into printing and processing restorations. Uh, there's just a lot of social media showing off and, you know, talking about how good printed restorations are. But a lot of people need to appreciate this is what they look like when they're printed. You know, oftentimes you have quite large sprues and it's just dripping with resin and you have to take these restorations and wash them multiple times at least twice um, and brush them and clean out all the excess resin and then you have to cut every single sprue now thankfully because resins are you know they're resins it's not like cutting zirconia these are very easy to cut and, and polish but just be aware that you know printing restorations even though it's made to seem like some golden bullet it really isn't what it's made to be I think that printing and milling will both have their place in any digital lab and any digital clinic. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. So how do you make it work? It's simple, guys. How do you make digital dentistry work for you? You have to research. You have to buy something. A lot of people just sit on the fence for far too long. Now is the best time to buy a scanner. You know, there's a saying that probably... The, the number one best time to buy a scanner was probably yesterday, and the second best time is today. I think a lot of people just need to get into it. The, the ship is sailing, and if you're still sitting on the fence, you know, I think you just need to reach out to someone who can help you choose the right scanner for your practice and jump into it. The next thing you need to do is train, appreciate, and accept the fact that, you know, you, you're not going to be able to just use a scanner proficiently on day one. It's going to take some training. It's going to take some practice. And that's just part of the game. Everyone goes through that learning curve. And how you get better is just practice, practice, practice. When you buy a scanner, scan your DA, scan your reception staff, scan your wife, your husband, whoever. You need to practice. 
don't just jump into a patient's mouth with some technology that you've never trained or practiced and then end up in a, in a frustrating clinical situation. The bottom line is dentistry, guys, is changing. Dentistry is changing significantly and you need to embrace the future. You need to embrace technology because if not, you are falling behind. And it's crazy to see how much dentistry has changed in the past five years, let alone what's going to happen in the next five years with all this AI and printing and milling and technology just getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. 